is Dr. P. Savitri. The next speaker on the line is Dr. Gaurav Sajdeep. Please be ready after this. Starts. Yeah, please. Good morning, one and all. I'm going to talk about a case series of ophthalmic association and optic nerve aplasia. So it's not moving. Optic nerve aplasia is extremely a rare congenital optic nerve anomaly presents with the absence of optic nerve head, retinal vessels, retinal ganglion cells, and optic nerve fibers. The exact estimation of optic nerve aplasia is not known or it is underestimated due to media haze obscuring the visualization or lack of imaging or focus on other obvious findings. So the associations are not highlighted. The diagnosis of congenital optic nerve aplasia is highly significant due to its genetic and systemic implications. Our study is a retrospective study which includes patients with microcornea or sclerocornea with suspected posterior segment pathology referred from, pe referred from pediatric clinic for fundus evaluation or imaging or patients with clinical or imaging findings suggestive of optic nerve aplasia. Detailed history of consanguinity and family history, visual acuity and visual behavior were assessed, anterior segment and posterior segment examination with B-scan were done. All examination were done without general anesthesia. Our results are Seven eyes of four babies presented between three months to four years of age. Three eyes of two patients had no perception of light and one eye had perception of light. Young pa younger patients' vision couldn't be assessed. Six out of seven eyes had microcornea, out of which four with opacification and clear cornea was noted in two eyes of two babies. Along with that, one eye had persistent pupillary membrane and pupillary reflex could not be elicited due to opaque media or poor cooperation. No visualization of the posterior segment is noted in five eyes and absent optic disc noted in two eyes. MRI showed optic nerve hypoplasia or aplasia and it was confirmed in all seven cases. Along with that, two eyes of one baby had a colobomatous cyst in the eye and two out of four babies had chiasmal aplasia. B scan of seven eye revealed microphthalmus and small rudimentary or absent optic nerve shadow. Eyes with no view had crumpled up retina, total close funnel RD, stalk like structure, along with that absence of lens in two eyes of one baby, and dystrophic calcification of ocular coats was noted in one, and specks of calcification was noted in one. Final diagnosis in the presence of three bilateral and one unilateral hypoplasia or aplasia of optic nerve was done. Genetic testing was offered for all four patients, where two babies had one balanced chromosomal translocation and another one with PIT X3 mutation. Our case one had microcornea with scarring with shallow anterior chamber in the right eye and left eye had persistent pupillary membrane with no view of the fundus where MRI showed optic nerve aplasia. And case two, both eye had microphthalmus and corneal scarring with no view of the fundus. MRI showed extreme microphthalmus with multiple colobomatous cyst and hypoplasia of the optic nerve and chiasma. Our third case showed normal right eye and left eye had no fixation of light and microcornea with corneal scarring and fundus showed absent disc and vessels with colobomatous changes. MRI showed unilateral optic nerve aplasia in the left eye with thinned out extraocular muscles. Our case 4 showed mutation in PIT X3 mutation. And this is the uh, summary of a largest case series of optic nerve aplasia done by Safran et al. In which, which is comparable with our study which shows most common presentation is microphthalmia or microcornea and anterior segment showed post persistent pupillary membrane. Posterior segment, segment showed absent optic nerve, retinal dysplasia, persistent fetal vasculature, retinal atrophy and chorioretinal coloboma. MRI showed absent optic nerve and chiasma. Along with that absent lens and balanced chromosomal translocation and PIT X3 mutation variant was diagnosed in our case series and it happened to be the second largest case series to best of our knowledge. To conclude, the diagnosis of ONA can be made with high index of suspicion when associations like microcornea or with, with or without opacification, other developmental anterior segment anomalies like persistent pupillary membrane, closed funnel retinal detachment, dysplastic retina and persistent fetal vasculature. Microphthalmic eye prompts imaging with B-scan or MRI for the optic nerve status to rule out associated CNS anomalies. Isolated ONA without systemic abnormalities require early initiation of rehabilitation according to their age to reduce the morbidity. Thank you. Uh, 
it was a nice presentation. I had only one doubt. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you told, there were no systemic uh, elements in the babies. So why didn't you do the examination under anesthesia? Because all your patients were very small, like seven months, six months old. Yes, so why didn't you use the general anesthesia for examination? Because it could uh, have been very easy for you to examine the no, child. No, all the examination we did and babies were comfortable without general anesthesia only, ma'am. So we didn't uh, have an option to do it. Okay. We were able to do the examination without general anesthesia only. Okay, even the neuroimaging you did uh, without anesthesia? Neuroimaging, we didn't do it here. It was done outside, ma'am. Okay. The optignum hypoplasia is it primarily a retinal ganglion cell maldevelopment yes, rather than hypoplasia of the optic nerve? It is a retinal ganglion uh, cell development, sir. So if the retinal ganglion cells are maldeveloped, mm. automatically the optic nerve gets maldeveloped. Yes. So the primary problem is in the ganglion, ganglion cells, cell. yes. not necessarily because optic nerve is after all it's an axon. Mm. The cell body of the axon is in the ganglion cell layer. So if the cell body doesn't develop, the axon doesn't develop. So it's a misnomer to keep saying optic nerve, aplasia, hypoplasia, but you should say ganglion cell abnormality. Yes. Correct? Yes, sir. Mm. So to prove that, you should have done uh, OCT. Babies are very young to do an OCT or uh, it's like seven months old and three months or four years like that only we had patients sir. and the media view is not there in most of the oh. babies media clarity was not there okay good 